This is a big crowd. This is a big crowd. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And hello to Swanton and hello to Toledo. And I'm thrilled to be back in Ohio with thousands of hardworking, loyal, great, American Patriots, 43 days from now. Can you believe it? 43 days. We're going to again win Ohio, I understand, from Bob Paduchek. You know, Bob, that we're going to win it by more than we did. What did we win it? Nine. We won by nine points. I just came into that big, beautiful plane. It's got more televisions than any plane in history. They've got televisions in closets, in bathrooms, on the floor, on the ceilings. And I just saw that we're tied in Ohio. I don't think so. No. They say President Trump may have a slim lead in Ohio. They're not even campaigning in Ohio, come to think. No, they're fake polls. They're almost as fake as the writers themselves. They're all fake. Remember last time they said, no, he's going to lose Ohio. We won by nine points. So we had seven swing states last time. President Trump is going to go home early, but it wasn't president at that time. It was just Donald Trump. He will go home early. And uh, we did. We went home early as victors, right? But we had, we had nine states. They had one of the crazy papers, New York Times. You know, they hired that guy. They paid him millions because he never predicted wrong. He was wrong. And I don't know if they had a contract where they could fire him. But they hired this guy. We had nine states. I was down in all of them on the day of an election. I was going to lose all nine, and I guess what? I won every one of them. Fake polls. They're fake polls. And then we have a crowd like this. I don't know. Look, you know where the cameras? Are you turning around? These guys are bad people, I swear. They never turn the cameras around, ever. Turn them around. Turn them around. They never turn, look at them, they're just like a bunch of stiffs, real stiffs. Why don't you turn the cameras around for once? You know, you look back there, you can't see it. There's gotta be, feels like, feels like Madison Square Garden on the ground, except we have more people. Ah, oh boy, it's always tough, you know, we go through this all the time. We're always asking them, look at these crowds. I mean, as far as, you can't see it. You have this prime territory, like you should be in the real estate business. Now, as far as the eye can see back there, the cameras don't, they don't get it. You only hear it from the sound. I go home, I say to the first lady, did you see that crowd we had tonight in Ohio? 
And she goes, no, no. They just keep it on your face. That includes Fox. They just keep it here, right here. They don't want to show. You know what they don't know and what they don't get is that showing this kind of activity is a good thing for them. It's positive for their ratings. It's really a good thing. But they don't want to do it. But I give up on it. You know what you do? You hear it. Because you can't have, you know, when Sleepy Joe Biden, he's got the circles. You know those big circles? And you know why he has the circles? He's got four of them. Because they can't, I mean, think of it. He is a guy who's failed every time he ran. We called him 1% Joe. And now he's shot and he got their nomination. How the hell does that work out? How does that work out? But he's got the circles. He's got like four. Sometimes he has six. Because that's a good way of saying if you don't have any people, just put them in the circle and he's practicing the science. No, it doesn't work out, but we're going to win four more years in the White House. We're doing things that nobody's ever done before. We're doing what nobody's ever done. And thank you for being here. You know, I wish we could move the press back further, if you want to know the truth. As our nation mourns the loss of Supreme Court justice, everybody. Thank you. So as our nation mourns the loss of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I will soon announce a nominee for the United States Supreme Court. They say it's the most important thing a president can do. I don't know. I think military maybe, you know, we rebuilt your military two and a half trillion dollars. <laughs> We will fill that seat. It's going to go quicker. Probably announce the person. I, I don't want to make the men too angry. It will be a woman. Is that okay? Is that okay? I don't want to have a problem with men. They'll say, Trump is doing very poorly with men. You know, you listen. How's he doing? Well, he's doing very poorly with men, with women. He's doing very poorly with the black community, the Hispanic community. And then you have the election night. Doing very poorly with those with diploma, without diploma, college, PhDs. What's he doing? Well, oh, no, it's going to be a very short night. Then they say, Donald Trump is the projected winner by a lot. And they say, well, what happened is he did very well with women, did very well with men, diplomas. He did well with African-American community. By the way, we are doing really well with the African-American community, with the Hispanic community. We're doing well with women. We're doing very well. We're doing well with suburbia, suburbia. You know, I ended a regulation that will destroy suburbia. If uh, Biden got in, they will destroy the suburbia. We call it suburbia of the world. And we love it. I know it well. Westchester County, the uh, suburban they sometimes, if you say suburban housewife, you're in deep trouble. So what you do is you say suburban women, they love me. You know why? They want security and they don't want projects being right next to their house. That's okay. They don't want it. And by the way, that includes minorities because 29 to 30% of the suburban communities are minorities. And that includes them. They don't want that. They want safe communities. They want great communities. They don't want to have, they don't want to lose the American dream. It's very simple. I got rid of the regulation from Obama Biden that was destroying suburbia. Okay, destroying it. And I think suburbia has got to wake up because uh, if they get in, you know who's in charge? You know who's in charge of the program? Cory Booker, Cory Booker. Cory Booker. So I think uh, the suburban women and suburban men and husbands and wives and everybody, you better get smart because uh, you're not going to have your dream very much longer if they get in. If I get in, you've got it. You've also got your Second Amendment if I get in. 
In 2018, we expanded the Senate majority. Remember, they said, first of all, I wasn't running. I wasn't running. It makes a difference. Wait until you see what happens. We're going to take back the House. We're going to get rid of this crazy Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Kevin McCarthy's done a great job. We're going to take back the House. People are so tired of her. People are so tired. Did you hear today the latest? So they impeached me for a perfect phone call. Perfect. It was a perfect phone call. Now they want to impeach me again if I nominate somebody as I'm constitutionally obligated to do to serve on the Supreme Court of the United States. Go ahead. And I want them. I want them to do that. I want them to do that. We will. We will. If he puts forth a highly qualified candidate, we will impeach him. Well, I said, well, I'm the only guy in the world that could get impeached for trying to fill a seat in this opinion. So we're going to put up our nominee who is going to be outstanding. We're looking at five incredible jurists, five incredible people, uh, women that are extraordinary in every way. I mean, honestly, it could be any one of them. We're going to be announcing it on Friday or Saturday. And again, they say it's the most important thing. And think of it. So in a single term, single term, by the end of our term, we will have nominated and had confirmed. I think it'll end up being over 300 federal judges and hopefully three Supreme Court justices. Think of that. Three. You know, some presidents, they never get any. They last a long time. A lot of presidents get none. We've had three. Uh, it's blowing their minds. It's blowing their minds. But for the people of Ohio, this is what you want. So it looks like we're going to have three. And uh, it's going to be very exciting. It's exciting even for me. I'm going to look forward to it. Probably Saturday we will announce the nominee. And it's somebody that you're going to have great respect for. Great respect. Thank you. Thank you. Big stuff. That's a big thing. You know, they set the course of our country for many years to come. Whether it's on life or the Second Amendment or so many other things, they set the whole course of the country. A very important position, the most important. Joe Biden has refused to list the names of his potential justices because he knows they're too extreme to withstand any form of public review. If Joe Biden and the Democrats take power, they will pack the Supreme Court with far left radicals who will unilaterally transform American society far beyond recognition. They will mutilate the law, disfigure the Constitution and impose a socialist vision from the bench that could never pass at the ballot box. So they don't want to show the judges because the only ones that he can put in are far left radicals. And if he does something even toward left of center, which would be acceptable, I guess, we have no choice. If he did that, he would lose the left. So he's going to have to put in radicals. So he doesn't want to show who his judges are. I've shown all a list. I have a double list, about 45, from which I will only pick. But he doesn't want to do that. Because if you found out who he was going to pick, he would be unelectable. Hopefully, he's going to be unelectable anyway. We're going to find that. So he wouldn't be able to survive a Joe Biden. You wouldn't be able to survive. You know, uh, we've been calling it socialism. I don't think it's socialism. I think it's a step beyond what they're talking about. You look at Portland, you look at Chicago, you look at New York, you look at Baltimore and Oakland. You know, these are Democrat run cities that are horrible on crime. There's no law and order, no cash bail, no anything. And you know what? The Republican cities are running great. They're running great. And so we're going to get it all changed around. We went into Minneapolis. We solved the problem like you wouldn't believe. What did it take? You saw it. What did that take? I would say probably 30 minutes, right? They should have called us in about uh, seven days earlier. How about the reporter? He gets up there. Behind him is a burning city. I never saw anything like it. And he's saying, 
Uh, there are really no protests here. This is very friendly. And we call this a friendly protest uh, because you're not supposed to have political rallies. You're not supposed to have anything. The only thing you can have is thousands of people running down a street, burning stores, looting, doing what that's OK, because that's protesting. But we'll call this a friendly protest. But your children will be robbed of their future. and The damage will endure for generations to come. We have to win. This is the most important election in the history of our country, in my opinion. And a lot of that's got to do with the fact that, you know, we're going to have one extra, but we didn't think this was going to happen. But I used to say just a week ago, we're going to have one, two, three, four, and maybe even five, the next president. And the Supreme Court is going to be a tremendous factor. A lot of people said that's the reason I won so easily in the Electoral College last time. 306, 306 to 223. He will not get to 270, remember? He will not get to 270. This will be a short evening for Donald Trump. Oh, good riddance. Thank God we got rid of all. This is going to be good. And then a problem happened. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. Remember? Remember the one she was crying? She was crying. Donald Trump has won Ohio, but it wasn't winning Ohio. It was by the margin. Where the hell, he said, where did this margin come from? They opened the polls and they closed the polls. Normally you have to wait hours unless it's a total runaway. And they said, uh, the polls and the doors are closed. In Ohio, Donald Trump is what? And they go, oh my God. But wait a minute, he won by nine points. What the hell's going on over here? And they said, Donald Trump has won the state of Florida. Donald Trump has won the state of Georgia. Donald Trump has won North Carolina, South Carolina. All right, remember that? Was that the most exciting evening, really? Remember? And it's not Donald Trump, it's you. It's all of us. It's not Donald They use the name Donald Trump. It's, it's all of us have won because this is going to be. And this one's going to be even better because nobody has done. And they don't even challenge it, the fake news. Nobody has done in three and a half years what we've done. We've rebuilt our military, two and a half trillion dollars. We've taken care of our vets. We have choice. We have accountability. We can fire people now when they don't treat our vets right. We couldn't do that before. They could treat our vets terribly. We have accountability. Nobody has done what we've done for our vets. 91% approval rating at the VA. 91%. The highest ever. So nobody's done, and that's why I think this is going to be the most important of all. I used to say, well, I don't know, how does it compare to 2016? I just gave that up. This is the most important election. You know why? Two reasons. Number one, that's over with. The hell with it. <laughs> it's the hell with it. But the truth is, this is really going to be, that's got a seat, it's got a seat in. And we have a lot of new things, including additional, substantial, middle income tax cuts and other tax cuts. And and tremendous regulation cuts. And we're finishing up with our military. You know, we're building Space Force. The wall is going incredibly. It's going incredibly. And remember the wall. They don't talk about the wall anymore, the fake news. You know, once we started building it, and you think that was easy to build the wall? We had an entire party that would die for the fact, and I made a terrible mistake in the wall. Instead of telling you we're going to build a wall, we're going to build a wall that Democrats formed. It was very tough, but I got it. I'm a real estate developer. You can always get money. You know, you learn. We have a lot of little pockets. We had a lot of big pockets. The military was great. The Army Corps of Engineers were great. So up to we're up to 330 miles of wall. We're doing 10 miles a week. And we're going to be finished with the wall very soon. And it's exactly the wall, the little more expensive uh, wall. They want, like, nice, expensive 
but exactly what Border Patrol wanted. We're building them the exact wall that they wanted. We can't give them any excuses. We can't give them any excuses. But you know, it's true. They used to talk about the wall all the time because they never thought I'd be able to get it built, right? Once I got it going, got it built, I got the financing. We won a lot of lawsuits, by the way. We, had a, we won a lot of lawsuits. They sued us. Pelosi was suing us. Congress was suing us. Senate was suing us. We won a lot of lawsuits. Once it was obvious that we won and we started building, they never talk about the wall anymore. And I made a terrible, terrible mistake because I had to work my ass off to get that thing built. You have no idea. You have no idea. You have no idea. But I should have said the mistake. I should have said when I talked to these big crowds, and the crowds are getting bigger, there's more enthusiasm now we, than we ever had four years ago. But I should have said, instead of we will build a wall, instead of we will build a wall, I kept a we will build a wall, place would go crazy. I should have said, we will not build the wall under no circumstances will we build a wall. The Democrats would have given us all the money we wanted. It's true. It's true. And then they would have said, see, he didn't keep his campaign promise. These people are sick. The Biden nominated justices will shred our Second Amendment, eliminate the right to self-defense and allow the government to confiscate your privately owned firearms. You know that. Put in other language, they will end your Second Amendment. OK, and they will do that. By the way, if I wasn't here, you wouldn't have a Second Amendment right now. That would be gone. You know, I hate to say it. I'm the only thing standing between you and chaos. I'm telling you, and Second Amendments and all of the other things. Biden's justices will remove the words under God from the Pledge of Allegiance. Did you see that? Did you see it? They said, no, we never removed. And I saw it. They're doing the Pledge of Allegiance. And I said, oh, there must be a typo. They left the words under God out of the Pledge of Allegiance, the Democrats. And I said, oh, there's a typo. Typo, they made a mistake. What a stupid mistake. Can you believe it? That guy's in big trouble. What a stupid mistake. And then I heard it a second time. They did the same mistake. I said, well, that's what they're doing. They're going to take God out of everything, just like they want to knock down the statue of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson. And it's never happening. And it's never happening. You know, a lot of these Democrat states, you see it, the churches are closed. They don't want our churches to open. You can have a riot where you kill people in the streets. 25,000 people don't have to wear masks, nothing. They can march down the streets, step on each other's face. They can do whatever the hell they want. That's OK. But you can't go to church. They have ideas. They have plans. And it's never happening with me as your president. That I can tell you. And you see it. They want to tear down crosses from public spaces. You see it. You know, since I signed a little law, you know, they were ripping down a lot of statues about four months ago, right? And I said, do we have any laws like old laws when they were strong, when we were smart, when we were tough? Sir, we have one, sir. A general came in. What's the law, general? Sir, there was a law from quite a while ago, 10 years in prison. They didn't use the word jail, prison. Prison's a tough word. I said, what do you mean 10 years? You got 10 years in prison if you knock down a statue or if you knock down a monument. I said, general, let me see that sucker, please. Bring that to my office. And uh, we revived it because you can't get that approved by Congress. They would never do. Today in Congress, you do it, they'll give you half a day in, uh, in a hotel someplace. So 10 years. So they were having a big march on Washington in two days. And I signed this new law. We updated it. And it was 10 years. You get 10 years in prison. You touch, you knock down a monument. And there's no games. This is the old days. This is the days when we had strong laws, when we had real laws, when we had real politicians that knew how to make laws. So here's the thing. So they were going to come in. They were actually looking to knock down the statue of a man named Thomas Jefferson. That's not too good. OK. They had obliterated a lot of different things. And so I had a news conference. I announced that I'm signing a law 
that anybody that knocks down a monument or a statue gets 10 years in jail. And the police in Washington, and we had National Guard, we had Secret Service. We were all ready for them. We were gonna have, we were ready for them. And the time came, that was only a problem. Nobody showed up. You know why? 10 years was too much. 10 years was too much. It's amazing the way, isn't it amazing the way it all works? So instead they burned down Portland. I speak to the governor, I speak to oh, the mayor is hopeless. He's a hopeless, poor, a poor guy. They chased him out of his apartment. And he still thinks they're wonderful people. They're burning down his city. But I want to go in there with the National Guard so bad it would take us 15 minutes to solve the problem. When they heard in Seattle that we were going in, you know, we were going in the next day, the guys just walked away. They left. That was the end of it. We had nothing to do. But they want to ban all prayer in public schools and require taxpayers to fund extreme late-term abortion. Biden's justices will erase national borders. They don't want borders, protect sanctuary cities, and compel the unlimited entry of foreign nationals. And if you look at some of these jihadist nations, uh, no thank you. Somebody said, that's not nice, that's not politically correct. I said, that's okay. They'll cripple the police departments, free violent criminals, shield foreign terrorists, and declare the death penalty unconstitutional even for the most depraved mass murderers who kill women and children. That's what they want. They don't want any death penalty, not for the Boston bomber, not for anybody. You see the Boston bomber, they're still trying this guy, what he did to so many lives. He ruined, killed people, ruined so many families, ruined so many lives. In three and, a, and by the way, they want the Boston bomber to be able to vote. You know that. In three and a half years under my administration, we've secured America's borders, rebuilt the awesome power of the United States military, obliterated the ISIS caliphate 100%, fixed our disastrous trade deals, and brought jobs and factories back to the great state of Ohio. I love Ohio. I love Ohio. I don't know what it is. I was told by Bob and some of the congressmen that are here, we have some great ones, I'm gonna introduce them in a second, but I was told that they're not even trying for Ohio. You know why? Because I love you and you love me and that's the way it is. That's the way <laughs> Thank you, I love you too. You know, it's very interesting. So somebody in the fake news media did a story yesterday because this crazy chant is going on. They have two about the seat and, you know, all that. But there was another chant that's happening at all these rallies. We're having massive rallies. We're in Minnesota. We had a tremendous crowd. Wisconsin, tremendous. Pennsylvania, every one of them. I mean, no fair, it's like this, everyone. But this rant is going on like it's crazy and it's, we love you, we love you, we love, and you know what? I don't want to say it, I'm just saying, they have not been able to find in the history of politics in this nation, even we loved Ronald Reagan, but we have, they have not been able to find where people broke out and said, we love you about, I guess I have to call myself a politician, I don't feel like a politician. No, but think of that. No, how nice is that? I never heard it. I've been to a lot of different speeches and rallies. I've never heard crowds go, we love you. But you know why? We love you. I love you. But you know why? Because, again, nobody has done what we've done. Ohio had the best year in its history last year. We had a great year. And next year, assuming we win, which I hope we're going to win, but if we win, you're going to have a year next year. First of all, take a look at the third quarter. It's going to be announced the numbers just before the election. It'll come out three days before the election. And I'll tell you what, I'll bet on the numbers, even though crazy Nancy and these people don't want to give any stimulus. They don't want to give anything. They want to keep a lot of states closed wherever they can. You know what they're going to do? They're going to announce uh, they're going to be opening on November 4th. They'll be open. 
All these closed states, they're going to be open on November 4th. One of them blew it, a teacher's union. Did you see it? No, we don't want to open now. We don't want to open the pandemic, the pandemic. We don't want to. We're rounding the turn of the pandemic. Vaccines are coming soon. But we don't want to open. Uh, round uh, November 4th, we're going to open. This, this person that's in charge of a union said that. That was not good. I think they'll get rid of her quickly. I'm also proud that we have successfully brought back the Big Ten and the Ohio State Buckeye. Right? You better have a good year after all of that. You have a good team, right? Good coach, good team, good everything. You have a good team. You always have a good team. But you know, there was a case I was sort of told, I, what do I know? I said, I said, how's it going? Everything good? I was talking. They said, sir, Sleepy Joe Biden did an ad that you, me, that you closed football. I said, what do you mean I closed? I didn't close. The guy did an ad. It's called disinformation. It's called the opposite of what the fact is. Not only didn't I close it, I didn't think about it too much, okay? The state should all be open. But I heard about Big Ten football. And because of this ad, I said, hey, wait a minute, I have an idea. It was a fake ad, just like the ad on the grave sites. And that allows me to say that this man is a gross incompetent. He has no idea. Because now, see, I would never talk like that. But when I saw that horrible thing, and nobody's done more for the military than I have. When I saw that horrible ad, an anonymous source has said that Donald Trump said this. I have 28 people now that have come forward saying it's a total lie. They don't care. So they did an ad. Once they did that, I said, well, now the gloves are off. Let's face it. Joe Biden is incompetent. He always was, even in prime time. He was incompetent in prime time. And now he's really incompetent. But because of the ad, I said, you know, it's very interesting, that ad. It's very interesting. Let me call up the commission. I called up the commissioner, a very good guy. And I said, Commissioner, uh, what can we do to get Big Ten football back? Well, I don't know. So we started. And we started a little thing. The commissioner, myself, one of my guys, he's fantastic. And within a few days, it started getting talked about. And then we kept it going, and we helped them with some testing because we have the greatest testing in the world. We get no credit for it. We've tested almost 100 million people. India is second with 38. And they have, they have 1.5 million people, slightly more than you. But I will tell you, so all of a sudden they have schools. Then it looked like it was going to open without Michigan and without a couple of states. And then all of a sudden the pressure became so great. And the full league is opening now, and it's going to be very exciting. And, and I will tell you, I, I don't, it's not a question of taking credit, but truly, we were the ones that did that. I mean, it was. You know, I'll tell you when I do it or when I don't. But it was closed. It was gone. It was announced that it was closed. And what really spurred me on was when Sleepy Joe announced that I was the one that did it. I said, I didn't even know it was closed. But once I found out it was, I called the commissioner. He was really good, I tell you. And, and we called a couple of the top people at the universities, and they got it going. It looked like we had seven schools, eight schools. All of a sudden, everybody fell into line. I think they're all open now. They're all, every one of them is participating. So I want to thank the commissioner. I want to thank all of those schools. May the best team win. In other words, Ohio State. That's a good thing. You know who the best proponents were? The players and especially the parents of the players. You know, these kids have a short window to get into the NFL to create some excitement and how good they are. And you have a lot of potential players, but they couldn't play football. And uh, they said, we're safer on the field than we are staying at home. And they meant it. And we did something, and I'm happy about it. So enjoy the football. Enjoy it. <laughs> Under 16 years of presidents, Obama and Bush, Median household income rose only $2,945. So remember that. That's 16 years, 2009. So let's say 3000 Under three years of President Trump, it rose almost $7,000. Okay, so think of that. 16 years, three years, achieving the highest median income in the history of our country. In my first three years, we lifted 6.6 .6 million people out of poverty the largest poverty reduction of any president in the history of our country. We built the greatest economy in the history of the world. 
And we are doing it again. We're building it again. You know, I see those signs, make America great, make America great again. So I say this, it's called now, make America great again, again. Because <laughs> we did it. And then we had to close it up. We saved millions of lives. If we didn't do that, you would have had 3 million people. It would have been terrible. It would have been just terrible. It's terrible anyway. They shouldn't have allowed it to happen, China. To defeat the China virus, we launched the largest mobilization since World War II. Through pioneering therapies, we reduced the fatality rate 85% since April. Think of that. That's because it was a bad thing. But scenes right now that are right there. They're And with the regime, you wouldn't be, you'd be three years away because they would have never gotten out of the FDA. What we've done in a very safe manner is amazing. Now, remember this. Biden was in charge of the swine flu, right? It's called the H1N1. Remember, he calls it the N1H1. I said, no, 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 no. H comes before the N. It's so easy. But he goes, the N1H1. We say, no, but it's the swine flu. Maybe we just call it the swine flu. He did such a gross, horrible job on that. And his own man who was in charge of it said they didn't have a clue. They didn't know what they were doing. It was far le I was a much less lethal disease. And they lost many, many people, many, many people. It was totally incompetently. And now I got this guy standing up. Well, we're giving him advice. His own guy that ran it, did everybody see this? Is saying they didn't, they didn't have a clue what they were doing. It was so bad. I don't know why the hell he said it, to be honest with you. Who would say that? Maybe because he was honest. Does that make sense? And now Biden gets up and he's telling, and he's saying to do the same things as we've already done. He basically took our plan and he said, this is what you should do. But we've among the lowest case fatality rates of any major country in the world and the fastest economic recovery by far of any Western nation by far. Our bold and early action saved millions of lives and our decisive economic response saved tens of millions of jobs, including 1.9 million jobs in the state of Ohio. You know that, he knows. He's got one of them. <laughs> He's got one of them. Through Operation Warp Speed, we're developing these great vaccines and that's gonna be literally, these will be done in record time like nobody's ever done it before. On November 3rd, Ohio will decide whether we end the pandemic and return to record prosperity or whether we allow sleepy Joe Biden and his group of incompetents to delay the vaccine, shut down the country. He actually suggested that he would shut down the country. We now know the disease. We didn't know it. Now we know it. It affects elderly people, elderly people with heart problems and other problems. If they have other problems, that's what it really affects. That's it. You know, in some states, thousands of people, nobody young, below the age of 18, like nobody. They have a strong immune system. Who knows? You look at you. Take your head off to the young because they have a hell of an immune system. But it affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. By the way, open your schools. Everybody open your schools. Sleepy Joe Biden wants to impose a $4 trillion tax hike, ban American energy, destroy the suburbs, give free health care to illegal aliens. How about that one? And you know the bad part about that? You know, we, all are, we all have heart. We want to take care of people. Problem with that is everybody's going to come to the United States. People that weren't even thinking about it, they're going to say, oh, man, these idiots are given free health care, free college education. They're given free everything. They're given a Rolls Royce to every family that enters through the southern border. Remember I said that jokingly and CNN said, he misrepresented, they are not getting a Rolls Royce. Are they? I agree. No, they're sick. They are sick people. And indoctrinate your children with poisonous anti-American lies. They're doing that. We're stopping it. To combat the toxic left-wing propaganda in our schools, I announced last week that we're launching a pro-American lesson plan for students called 1776 Commission. We will teach our children the truth about America, that we are the most exceptional nation on the face of the earth, 
And we are getting better and better all the time. We got it. No party can lead America that will not teach our children to love America. Biden's running mate, Kamala. Who likes Kamala? Does anybody like her? She was the most failed candidate in the entire... I mean, she started off good, and every week she went down, down. 15 points, 12 points, 11 points, 9 points, 6 points, 5 points, 4 points, 2 points. Didn't she leave it about 2 or 1? She was heading down to the basement. She was so mean to him, I felt sorry for him. No, I did. I felt sorry. She was so, she called him everything from a racist to a Me Tooer. He was a Me Too. He was a part of the Me Too generation. What, what she called him, what she said. So I brilliantly said, well, he can't pick Pocahontas because she was too nasty. How nasty was she to Bloomberg? Was she unbelievable? Boy, he was standing there. What happened? What happened? No, actually. What? What happened? What happened? Minnie Mike. He's another beauty. He's a real beauty. Minnie Mike, what happened? What the hell happened? He hit her so hard. Remember? She hits him with about 30 different things. And, she, and I'm not talking about our president. He thought she was talking about me. Can you believe it? And I'm not talking. I'm talking about you. He said, what? Get me out of here. Get me out of here. And now he wants to buy his way back into the Democrat Party. He wants to buy his way back into the Democrats. He hasn't taken enough abuse. If I were him, I'd sort of either write it out or stay with a good Trump economy and get even richer, you know? <laughs> Biden's running mate even urged supporters to help the bail rioters out of jail. You saw that? Including one who attempted to murder a police officer and a man accused of sexually assaulting an eight-year-old child. Now they're trying to free him on bail. They're putting up the money to get him out. Biden's plan to appease the domestic terrorists, and that's what it is, and my plan is to arrest the domestic terrorists. And that's what we've heard from many people in jail. Many people. Remember what I told you about the monument, just remember, it's be isn't it beautiful? We don't see that anymore. Do you, have you seen a monument knocked down recently? No, we don't see it anymore, I don't know. We, we want to rip, rip down, right? Abraham Lincoln, you know, it got to Lincoln. First it was people, not too many people heard of, Confederate soldiers, etc. You know, you say, hey, look, you know, do it through a process, but they started hitting Lincoln, then they hit Gandhi. Now, Gandhi was about peace. Gandhi just wanted peace. Leave me alone. Peace, peace, peace. Let's rip them down. They're sick people. The Democrat Party's war on cops has already led to a surge in vicious murders in Democrat-controlled cities, costing countless black lives. If Biden and the left gain power, they will dismantle police departments nationwide. I'll tell you, the community that's most hurt most hurt by what they're doing and there is the black community the hispanic community as president and we're doing great in the polls with the black community and the hispanic community right? and the asian community we're doing great in fact we did so well last night on one poll they said it must be a typo they did it must be an error was it it's no error you're going to find out on november 3rd it's no error as president, I will always stand, and I will always stand, with the men and women of law enforcement. Right? They're great people. They're very brave people. Not easy. And they don't get support. We have to give them back their dignity. We have to let them do their job. That's very simple. They're great. We're joined tonight by two high school football players. They became very famous. They became very, very famous. They became more famous than President Trump. They were beautiful. I watched them running through the, the crowds with those flags. And here someplace, I don't know, I got a lot of people here. We're going to try and figure it out. Hold up your flag, Jared Bentley and Brady Williams, who were recently suspended from their high school football team. 
after displaying flags in support of our police and first responders on the anniversary of September 11th attacks. Where are they? Come up here, fellas. Come up. Come up here. Come up here. Secret Service is thrilled about this. See, these, these young kids can hop over the fence like it's nothing. Come up here. They're good-looking kids, so I want to congratulate you. You've become famous. They're going to go to Hollywood. They're going to become movie actors right now. Great. You feel good about it? Huh? How's your team doing? How's your team? How's it doing? Huh? He said it could be better. You know what? You're doing great, and everybody out here loves you, and they appreciate you. Good guys. Good guys. So, Jared and Brady, thank you for supporting the heroes and our law enforcement. We all love you. I'm telling you, they, they were, you really set something up that's incredible. And thank you, parents, for letting you do it. I watched. You had to get, per, uh, you ask your parents' approval. Isn't that nice? And you know what the father said? You better do it. Right? That's great. Thank you very much, fellas. Great job. Really great job. Country has a lot of respect. And speaking about warriors, we're also joined tonight by some great, great congressmen who are warriors, and they represent Ohio so well, and they love you, and they love our country. Representative Bob Latta. Thank you, Bob. Great job. They like you, Bob. It's very good. Good job, Bob. Thank you very much. Congressman Warren Davidson. You know Warren. Thank you, Warren. Great job, Warren. And Congressman Mike Turner, great lawyer, actually. Thank you, Mike. Great job, Mike. Really great. Ohio Treasurer Robert Sprague. Robert, thank you. Thank you. Good treasurer. Ohio Auditor Keith Faber. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Keith. Ohio House Speaker Bob Cup. Great. Thank you, Bob. Great job. Ohio Senate President Larry Obhoff. Thank you. Thank you, Larry Obhoff. Larry's a good man. How's it going, Larry? Good? You're doing a good job? Huh? You're doing good? How are we doing, Larry? Is it going good? He said. You're right about that. You're doing a great job. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate it. Ohio GOP Chairman Jane Timken. She's unbelievable. Thank you, Jane. How are we doing, Jane? How's it going? How does it compare to four years ago, Jane? Up higher? All right. Good. Good. I think we are. I think we are. And a friend of mine that, I'll tell you, this is the greatest optimist when I thought we had to be down. We lost a lot of the top, top support, the head of the Republican Party, little things like that. I said, we don't have a head of the Republican Party. He left because you had a terrible governor in this state. Terrible. Your previous governor was terrible. He was terrible. And I'll tell you, I got this man. I didn't know him. And within about a week, I said, man, this guy's a big optimist. And he was right. He called it right to the thing. He was my, he ran my campaign. And when it came back for the second time, we had him in a high position. I said, Bob, I think you're great. You're doing a great job. I want you back in Ohio. We have to do it again. Bob Peducek. Where's Bob? Bob, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Get over here, Bob. Thank you, Bob. 
He wants no glamour. He wants no glory. He just wants to win. And he called it right down to the bone. We had a rough couple of days. I said, Bob, how are we doing? You went up two points. I said, you got to be kidding. But, you know, we did. We had so much, so much evolves around Ohio. And it's just a state that we have a relationship with. You know, it's a great state. We've done a great job for you, and you've done a great job for us, so we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Together, we've spent the last four years reversing the damage done by the Democrats and Joe Biden over a 47-year period. Think of it. He's always talking about, you should have done this, you should have done that. You know, he really just left office. It's not that long ago, right? He's been there for years and years, and now he should have done it. He's never going to do anything. He's never going to do anything. Guy is a stone-cold loser. Biden supported every globalist sellout of Ohio workers for over a half a century, including NAFTA, China's entry into the World Trade Organization, the disaster known as TPP, and the pla oh, how about the Paris Climate Accord? That's another beauty, I'll tell you. That one... That was designed to hurt our country. You would have lost trillions of dollars, closed your factories all over the place. In the meantime, China didn't kick in for another 10 years. The whole thing was a rigged deal. I tell you, I said, I'm going to get killed for this one, but we're going to terminate. And you know what? The people got it right away. Everybody understood. That was another ripoff of our country. This state lost one in three manufacturing jobs after the NAFTA and China disasters. Joe Biden is a shameless phony who pretends, you know, he's not even, he doesn't have a clue. What the hell? We're talking like he knows. He's got guys around him that are pretty smart. They're radical left. He's going to do whatever they tell him to do. He pretends to care about blue collar workers after spending more than five decades in Washington. He tells me, why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? You see these fake commercials. Why did you do it? I said, I've only been here three and a half years. This guy's been here for 47 years. He didn't do anything. History says when you're here for 47 years and you fail, it's not going to happen. But he was closing your factories, opening your borders, outsourcing your jobs, and inflicting economic carnage on your towns. And you know that. And I came along and you had the greatest couple of years you've ever had. To save our auto industry, I withdrew from the Trans-Pacific Partnership with Zahara. My actions saved countless jobs across Ohio and here in Toledo, the home of the Jeep, right? The home of the Jeep. That's good. That's a great brand. That's, they've done a great job with Jeep. Jeep. Everyone loves Jeep. Earlier this year, I kept my promise to Ohio when we ended the NAFTA nightmare. I proudly signed the brand new U.S. Mexico-Canada agreement into law. That's a big difference, like day and night. It's working out great, too. It's working out great. You know how I know that it's a good deal for us? Because they don't like it. I took the toughest ever action to stand up to China's rampant theft of Ohio jobs. We achieved American energy. We passed record tax cuts and regulations. Our energy independence is incredible. We have now energy independence. We don't have to be in these faraway lands anymore. Now, we'll be there to help certain allies that have been great, but we don't have to be. Since my election, natural gas production in Ohio has surged 63%. They want to close it up. By the way, you do know they want to close it up. They want to close up all fracking, natural gas, everything. They want to close it up. This would kill at least 700,000 Ohio jobs, probably more than a million. While I'm president, America will remain the number one producer of oil and natural gas on Earth. Ohio workers will continue leading the way. I just left the great state of Texas. And I talked to a lot of people like this, a great crowd of people. We have tremendous support all over the country. I'll tell you what, these people are great. And here's... Here's the, the platform that they have, Sleepy Joe Biden. No oil, no religion, no God, and no guns. Now, I'm, I'm in Texas. It's really rough being in Ohio, but now we're talking Texas. No oil, that doesn't work well in Texas, right? No guns, that doesn't work well in Texas. No God, that look what they're doing to the churches and everything. That doesn't work. No God, no religion, that doesn't work well. You would have to be 
George Washington with your running mate would be Abraham Lincoln, okay, your VP candidate, and you'd still lose very big. And then they say, yeah, he's doing okay. He's two up in Texas. They said it last time, too, that Texas is even four years ago. And, and everybody said, no, I think Trump is killing it. We'd have stadiums with 25, 30,000 people, much more they couldn't get in. We'd have 40, 50,000 people outside. And they'd say I was even. We won in a landslide, just like we won this state in a landslide. You know, the expression they use, Texas is in play. You know what in play means? It could go either way. And guys would get on and say, I don't think so. And then that night again, the polls in Texas have closed. Donald Trump has won the great state of Texas. I mean, the whole thing is crazy. It's crazy. You know what they do? It's suppression polls. They try and depress you. They try and make you happy so you don't, you're unhappy. So you go out to dinner with your wife, your husband. You go out to dinner. Darling, let's have dinner. It's so sad. We love Donald, but he just can't make it. Can't make it. Let's go out, have dinner, we'll come home, watch the results. Except 2016 came and nobody did that. They all went out and voted and we kicked ass. <laughs> was that, tell me, was that the most exciting evening in the history of television? Did you ever see the ratings, the combined ratings? I think the biggest ever, but was that the most exciting, 2016, was that the most exciting evening in the history of television? Huh? We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including more than $6 billion in contracts. You know, I'll tell you what, you like the word pronounced Lima or Lima, because I saved Lima. Can I tell you what? I saved Lima. You know, I came here and they were going to close that plant in Lima. They were going to close the tank plant, right? It was done. And I said, why are we closing a tank plant? And I got a couple of calls from my friends, the congressman right here. And I got calls and Jim Jordan called me. Do you like Jim Jordan? He's great. And I looked at this army tank plant in Lima. I said, why are we closing it? And I saw the people building the tanks and the technology is incredible. And if you ever close it, you'd never be able to open a thing like that again. So I overrode the generals. I overrode everybody. And now we're making a record number of tanks in that plant. And it's absolutely right. But we had tremendous success. We took 100% of the ISIS caliphate and we killed the founder and leader of ISIS, al-Baghdad. We took out the world's number one terrorist and the mass murder of American troops and many other people. Kasim Soleimani is dead. He's dead. I withdrew from last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. They paid $150 billion plus $1.8 billion in cash. You know, they got nothing. They got nothing. I kept my promise, recognized the true capital of Israel, and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Every president for many, many decades said they were going to do it. They never did it. They never did it. They didn't have the guts to do it. They campaigned on it. They're all going to do it. Then they got there. There was a lot of pressure put on a lot of pressure put on me. Every leader was calling all over the world. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. Mr. President, please don't do it. Don't do it. Don't move it. It's not just leave it the way it is. It's OK. But I promise. And I said, I'm going to do it. And then I got calls from the biggest people in the world, kings. I got calls from presidents, from prime ministers. Please, please don't do it. And I got calls, please have him call me back, me. I said, look, tell everybody I'm out for three days. I'm not going to be able to call him back. I had a news conference. We announced it. Then I called everybody back. Hey, how are you doing? How's everything going? Everything going good? Yeah, well, I want to talk to you about Israel, but it's too late. You already did it. And we did it. And we got it done. And nobody else got it done. And it's something we had to do. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And instead of endless wars, we are forging peace all over the Middle East. And you saw that. And I'm the only man that got nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. And I didn't get any press. They wouldn't put it. The two of them. 
Last week, I got, I don't, I'm not bragging about it. I'm just saying, you know, I'm the president of the United States. Because of Kosovo, Serbia, you know, they've been killing each other for years. I worked out a deal for them. I got nominated. And then Israel with Bahrain and UAE and many more to come. I mean, they all want to do we'll have peace in the Middle East without blood all over the sand. No blood. We're going to have peace in the Middle East. So I was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. And I told the story last night. Should I tell it or not? Should I? Yes? She wants me to. So I go home to our great first lady. I said, first lady, you're going to be so proud of me tonight. I was nominated not once, but twice for totally separate events by different people. Great people. First lady, I was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. I was like this. I was nominated. Yeah, no. it's a big deal for our country, right? And she said, oh, that's good. I said, let's turn on the evening news. Let's watch it. This is going to be a big show tonight. Get ready. And NBC, which is one of the most crooked, one of the worst newscasts. And I'm talking about normal NBC, not MSDNC. MSDNC is the worst. But so I turn on NBC with Lester Holt, another beauty. And they start with a hurricane. And then they went to something and something else. And I'm saying, First Lady, this is getting a little embarrassing. We're 20 minutes into a half hour show. They haven't mentioned the Nobel Peace Prize. And then it went through the whole show. And they never mentioned. Then I got nominated for a second one. They never mentioned. And when Barack Obama, Barack Hussein Obama got nominated. No, when Barack, when Barack Hussein Obama got nominated, he didn't know why he was nominated. It was like right at the very beginning. He didn't do anything. He did nothing. And he got nominated. It was the biggest story I've ever seen. But that's okay. In the meantime, we're president and they're not, right? We, we. Now it is true. You would think if you're nominated for the Nobel Prize, you'd get like maybe like a half a cent. Uh, the first lady, she sort of said, sorry, darling. That's the way it goes. And then I said that. Joe Biden opposed the mission to take out Osama bin Laden. He opposed killing Soleimani. He voted for the Iraq war, a disaster. He backed the disastrous Iran nuclear deal. And he cheered the rise of China as a very positive development for our country. Oh, it's really great. If it were up to Sleepy Joe, bin Laden and Soleimani would be alive today. ISIS would be on a rampage. Iran would control the Middle East. And China would be the dominant power anywhere in the world. And I want to tell you, if you go back a few months before this pandemic, we were gaining, gaining, gaining. We, we had an insurmountable lead on China. I always heard they were going to catch us by 2019 for 10 years. We were so far beyond. We were doing much better than they were. The Biden agenda would obliterate our economy. He'd destroy Social Security, destroy protections for pre-existing conditions. That's what he's going to do. Drain your Medicare by giving away your health care to illegal immigrants. He would end our travel bans on jihadist regions and increase refugee admissions by, listen to this, over 700 percent. And this is the manifesto with Bernie Sanders, with Crazy Bernie. He made this deal with Crazy Bernie. And by the way, a lot of the Crazy Bernie voters last time, four years ago, voted for Trump because of trade. Because they understand the one thing they do understand, they've been that our country has been ripped off for years. Biden opposes school choice and vowed to ban charter schools. Very important to have them in a second term. I will provide school choice to every parent in America. They're totally against it. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities, great jobs and a limitless future for all Americans. And just in conclusion, it's first of all, it's been a great honor to be with you. This is a, a really, it's a great state. They're great people. I really mean it. No, I really mean it. Get out there on November 3rd. We got to win this one big. This is a bad, bad ideology. This is probably a step beyond socialism. I really think in many ways it's communism we're talking about. This is a step beyond. Socialism's no good. Communism is really bad. But get out there on November 3rd and let's show them your stuff and show them 
all of us, the stuff of all of us. So in concluding, over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end the reliance, this ridiculous, crazy reliance on China and all of these faraway lands once and for all. We will make our medical supplies right here in the United States. We will hire more police. And by the way, thank you, police. Thank you, law enforcement. Increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement. And we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will defend the dignity of work and the sanctity of life. We will uphold religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms. We will strike down terrorists who threaten our citizens, and we will keep America out of these ridiculous, stupid, endless foreign wars. We will maintain America's unrivaled military way. Our military might has uh, never been like it is right now because of what we've done. And we had no choice. And hope to God we never have to use it. Because if you would ever see the power of what we've done over the last three years, it would be, uh, it's almost better for you not to see it. We are the envy of every power, every country in the world. We have weapons that nobody ever even thought possible. And just as I said, hope to God we never have to use them. And the way we don't have to use them is to keep that kind of strength. On the moon and the United States will be on Mars. That's what's happening. NASA is the, again, the leading space station anywhere in the world. There's nothing like a space center, what we've done. And there was grass growing in the runways when I took over three and a half years ago. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag. And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, In God We Trust. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great state of Ohio. So get your friends, get your family, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, get everybody, and get out and vote. Got to get out and vote. And in your state, in Ohio, Early voting has already begun, and don't wait. And when you see them cheating on the other side, I don't say if, when. When you see them cheating with those ballots, all of those unsolicited ballots, those millions of ballots, you see them. Anytime you do, report them to the authorities. The authorities are waiting and watching. From Akron to Columbus, from Cincinnati, the Queen City, I know it well, to Cleveland, and from Dayton to Toledo, we inherit the legacy of generations of Ohio patriots like Neil Armstrong, Annie Oakley, William McKinley, and the amazing Ulysses S. Grant. That's good. Nobody's stock has gone up like Grant. Nobody in the last 10 years. We stand on the shoulders of American heroes who crossed the oceans, blazed the trails, settled the continent, tamed the wilderness, dug out the Panama Canal, laid down the railroads, raised up the skyscrapers, won two world wars, defeated fascism and communism, and made America the single greatest nation in the history of the world. And you haven't seen anything yet. Proud citizens like you helped build this country, and together we are taking back our country we are returning power to you, the American people. With your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working, we are going to keep on fighting, and we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, 
one family and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Ohio, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Ohio. Get out and vote. Thank you.